Okay, good morning and good evening. Um, welcome to SCBA's monthly webinar on uh, membrane trafficking, and I'm Yi Hongye, a senior investigator at NIDDK. I'm pleased to introduce my colleague, um, Dr. Hong Xu, uh, a senior investigator of MHLBI, who will introduce today's seminar speaker. Dr. Hong, please. Okay, thank you, Yi Hong. Um, uh, Hong Xu, actually, it's my pleasure to introduce our today's speaker, uh, my colleague, uh, Zhu Hang Shen. Uh, Zhu Hang is a senior investigator at NIH. Uh, Zhu Hang is renowned for his seminal contribution uh, to the neuronal transport of cellular organelles, including mitochondria and lysosome. Over the years, the work from Zhu Hang's lab has revealed the fundamental mechanism uh, how this organelle being trans transported in and out uh, of synapses and along the axon. And also they show that how this process is essential for the energy metabolism and uh, a protein hemostasis at the very distal end of neuron, that is synapses. Uh, and re more recently, uh, the work in the Hunter lab show that how can they enhance the neuronal transport or recycling of this organelle can improve uh, neuronal regeneration. Uh, I'm really, really excited to listen, uh, hear Zhu Hang's uh, talk. And Zhu Hang's contribution to the, to the field has been recognized by many awards over the years, including the Triple S Fellow and SSCB Fellow, and more recently, the NIH uh, Director Award. Uh, so actually, I'm going to stop talking, let Zhu Hang to talk, because that's what we are here for. So Zhu Hang, the podium is yours, and please enlighten us. <laughs> Hello, uh, Yi Hong and Xu Hong. Thank you for hosting the Membrane Trafficking webinar today. It is my pleasure to have the opportunity to discuss the brain energy and mitochondria in support of neuron regeneration. So as we know, in the vivo nerve, central nerve systems, the mitochondria, which is a main cytopore plane, remain relatively stationary around the axons. But however, this stationary status could be genetically reprogrammed. So this video shows that after reprogramming in mice, the exon mitochondrial display very dynamic transport around the exon bundles in the mouse spinal cord. So first, uh, before my talk about data, I'd like to provide very brief introductions of our research program. So we are focused on the regulation, the exon to transport mitochondrial, lysosome, and the pre snapped cargoes. The regulation of this organelle transport is critical for the maintenance, the exon and synaptic homeostasis, which is essential for neuron survival function and regenerations. Specifically, our lab working on the two main programs. First, we study mitochondrial transport the energy metabolism in synaptic transmission, neuronal degeneration, and regenerations. The second we study is the exon transport the lysosome and presynaptic cargo in the maintenance, the distal degradation capacity, and the synapse formation and remodeling. So today I'm focusing the first part and for the regeneration. So as we know, the maintaining extensive neuronal structure functions require high level of energy support. The human brain, which only account for 2% of our body mass, but consume nearly 20% of total cellular energy in the form of ATP. The majority energy in neuron is consumed to maintain resting membrane potential or firing action membrane potential or driving synaptic transmission, which are critical for maintaining brain information processing. And for budget, energy budget in brain, here is some of the studies show that about 55% of total ATP in neuron is consumed within exon terminal synapses. About 1 million ATP molecules are required to power island channel to maintain memory potential. About 20,000 ATP molecules are consumed for driving each glutamine synaptic vascular release and recycling. So this rent neuron the most energy demanding cell types and brain is the most energy demanding organ in the body. 
So ATP is generated through the glycolysis and the mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation. So glycolysis generate two net ATP by converting one glucose into two pelvic. The pelvic and, and, and the field mitochondria through the oxidative phosphorylation to produce 30 to 36 molecular ATP. So mitochondria are key cytopropane by supplying almost 93% total ATP in neuron. So neuron are particularly vulnerable to mitochondrial dysfunction and the energy deficit. So this is a clinical relevant problem because the chronic mitochondrial dysfunction and the energy deficit are the pathological hallmark for major neurological and mental disorders. Brain injury also trigger acute mitochondrial damage the leading to an energy crisis and neural death. So targeting energy restoration is a potentially therapeutic strategy to maintain neuronal survival function and regeneration. So re-investigation into the mechanism, the reprogramming mitochondrial maintenance and repairing energy deficit represent emerging research frontier. So neuron and polarized cells with long axon and extensive branch terminals. So this is a mouse cortical neuron in culture dish. The mitochondrial label in the red color, which is through, distributed throughout the neuron, three neuronal compartments from cell body, dendrite, and axons. Then take a look for the, in the red brain. So here is a single nigrostratin dopaminergic neuron, which show widely spread in a highly dense axon hybridization. Such an extensive architecture is even more intricate in human brain. So neurons face exceptional challenges to deliver the mitochondrial to and maintain energy homeostasis throughout these long axons. So this video shows an axon segment of hippocampal neuron in which mitochondria are labeled with red color as synapses in green color. So you can see mitochondria move bi-directionally. They pass through the synapses. They can pulse, remobilize, and redistribute it. So this complex motility patterns achieved by set of model protein, which is including dining and kinesin driving the bi-directional transport along with adaptive protein, which link motor protein to the organelle, and also include anchoring protein, which stop mitochondrial transport. In the past decades, the many lab made important contribution in understanding the motor driven the mitochondrial transport. So our lab is focused on the anchoring mechanism by which neuron can position mitochondria in a high energy demanding regions such as axon terminal and synapses. So we identified an axon mitochondrial anchoring protein is back to the 2008 and named Centerfilling. And first also is Jensen Khan, that Jensen right now is running his own laboratory in China. So under confocal microscopy, the Centerfilling appear as small vesicular structures, mainly distribute in a MAP2 negative axon of hippocampal neuron. Then do immunogold electron microscopy. So you can see centrifilling antibodies nicely labeled the surface of axon mitochondria. Now recently in our 2017 neuron paper, we showed that using stat super resolution imaging to show that centrifilling is a target to the surface of the axon mitochondria. So when we look at axon more carefully, we found centrifilling is not evenly distributed in the, into all the axon mitochondria. So this mitochondria here showed a high centrifilling expression. The second one is next, showed much low centrifilling expressions. Then we co-expressed GF centrifilling and DSMIT into hippocampal neuron, followed by time-lapse imaging. You can see centrifilling labeled mitochondria show yellow, remain stationary. But centrifilling unlabeled mitochondria show red color. They're moving dynamically, passing through the axon segment. 
So this data suggests the syntophenin is axon mitochondrial anchoring proteins. So to confirm this, we made the syntophenin knockout mice. And in white type hippocampanula, about 38% of the axon mitochondrial is transport around the axons. So this is a quantification is uh, consistent with the literature reported. But however, if we delete the syntophenin gene, robust increased mitochondrial transport, the motility can reach about almost 80%. So, so far has no, in the literature, no any model, neuronal mitochondrial transport in such high motilities reported. Then we confirm this in using ex vivo cytokine so node from adult mice. So in the white type of mice, in about 30% of mitochondrial, a dynamic transport around across this cytokine node, but deleted syntophenin gene, robust increase in mitochondrial motility, about 71% the mitochondrial at transport. So is a syntophilin arrest mitochondrial trafficking through his static interaction with the microtubular. The syntophilin carboxyl terminal is a transmembrane domain which target to mitochondrial outer membrane. So moving or stopping mitochondrial move transport is controlled by the motor driving force and synthetic anchoring force. So this model is supported by an optogenetic studies, the selecting recruit synthetic or motor protein to exome mitochondria can dynamically change in the balance of mitochondrial motility in the axons. So these findings allows proposed essential hypothesis. So exome mitochondrial motility is regulate in all two sense, the change in local energy supply and consumptions during sustained synaptic transmission, degeneration, and the regenerations. So to understand the regulation of exome mitochondrial trafficking, we examine interfering expression patterns during the neuronal development. So first we look for the cortical neuron in culture. So interfering expression is a progressive increase with the neuron maturation from DIV3 young neuron to DIV22 and more mature neuron. But in the mouse hippocampal slice, the syntophilin is hardly detectable during the first two weeks postnatally, and then start expressed in third week, then maintain in high level throughout adulthood. Then we also recorded the exome mitochondrial motility in cortical neuron. This video is converted into the chemograph in which vertical line represent stationary mitochondrial and the curve represent multi mitochondrials. You can see exome mitochondrial motility is a progressively decline from the 50% motility at DIV7 young neuron down to the 20% motility in more mature neuron at DIV18. So this data suggests the increased interfering expression in mature neuron contribute to decline mitochondrial transport. So syntophilin expression patterns allows to propose two trafficking model. In early developmental stages, so syntophilin is not expressed and mitochondrial are dynamically delivery to the distal region, support axon growth and synaptogenesis, which require high level energy support. But in neuron getting mature, syntophilin start to express the high level interfering, which can anchor exome mitochondrial to ensure localized energy source. To test this further, we well, artificially to disrupt the interfering expression patterns in young neuron DRV2. So in DRV2, in no endogenous interfering expression, so mitochondria is a highly dynamic delivery to the distal exon tips, including growth cone. But if we enforced expiration syntophilin in DIV2 young neuron, you can abolish mitochondrial delivery to the distal exon tips. So you can see exon growth point is much smaller as shrink. So this data suggests the low syntophilin expression in developing neuron actually can facilitate exon growth. But that raises the fundamental questions. What impact of high syntophilin expression on mature neuron regeneration. To addressing these questions is clinically relevant 
because high interfering expiration imposes large challenges for mature neuron regeneration after injury. So injury initiate regeneration program, including these cyclic events, which all require high level of energy consumptions. But injury also is acute insult. They trigger the mitochondrial damage and leading to local energy crisis. So in the mature neuron, the high interferon expression can restrict healthy mitochondrial delivery to new growth cone, and also can hold the damaged mitochondrial in injured axon, preventing from the replacement. So based on this, we proposed the in injury crisis model or energy crisis model. So injury can induce energy crisis, contribute to central nervous system regeneration failure. We thought our syntophy mice is ideal model to test this hypothesis. So Binzo was a was former postdoc is now he is running his own lab in Beijing, test this hypothesis using the microfluidic chamber device, which physically separate the axon from cell body and dendrites. Then so being in the damaged injury is the axon and for after mitochondrial be labeled by GFP mito and TMIE. So TMIE is a membrane potential dye labeling healthy mitochondrial. So when mitochondrial are damaged, they lost the membrane potential. So they lost the TMIE staining. So mitochondrial color can change from yellow to the green. So this is a video I show you and during the axon injury, how mitochondria can change the colors and mitochondria become damaged. The before the injury, majority axon mitochondria is healthy. But after injury, you can see mitochondria can change, quickly change the color from yellow to green. That means they lost membrane potential are damaged mitochondria. So being next to monitor mitochondrial transport between cell body and axon terminal uh, chambers one hour after injuries. You can see syntophily not caught in your lung, displays more mitochondrial transport crossing the axon bundle from cell body to the terminals after injuries. So this raises the questions whether enhanced transport help remove damaged mitochondria from injury axons. So in our previous study we published in 2017 in neuron paper, we found monitor bi-directional mitochondrial transport is the healthy versus front dysfunction mitochondria around the same axons. So we found healthy mitochondria labeled by TMIE and GFP mito shows yellow as 80% mitochondria moving from the cell body to the distal region. But however, if mitochondria damage, they show only green color, there's 80% mitochondria move from the distal to the cell body. So this biased directional transport allow healthy mitochondria to replace damaged mitochondria in the distal axons. So now we tested this in the microfluidic chamber system for the axon injuries. So Y type and knock the neuron grew in the microfluidic chamber system and labeled by both color, GFP mito and TMIE. You see before the injury, majority mitochondria should be yellow as it can label by TMIE. Then five hours after injuries in the Y type of neuron, Majority mitochondria, they lost membrane potential. But in the knockout neuron, enhanced mitochondrial transport can accelerate replacement of damaged mitochondria. So, to examine injury induced energy crisis, we applied flat based redshift ATP probe named GO182, was generated by the Japanese group. The we have called ratio metric intensity, which is a color coded heat map reflect relative ATP level. Blue represent low ATP, a yellow or red color show the high ATP level. So following external injury six hours and white type neuron display energy deficit at the axon tips. While in knockout neuron, enhanced mitochondrial transport can rescue the energy crisis. Consistently, this energy recovery can facilitate axon regeneration. As you can see in the white type of neuron, hardly regrow six days after injury, but deleted interferon gene, robust enhanced axon regeneration. Then we choose the mouse cytokine 
for the crunch injury for in vivo regeneration models. The static node, we can monitor mitochondrial transport in ex vivo. So you can knock out my show robust exon regrowth, exon mitochondrial transport across the exon bundles. Then we're using the mouse static node for crunch injury. This is the injury site. Now, three days after injury, we monitor exon regeneration. So you can see knock cut of mice show more exon regrowth grows much longer compared to white type of mice. So this in vivo data encourage us to expand our study into mouse spinal cord injury model. So one of the most challenging regeneration model. So we collaborate with Xiaomi Hughes Group in neurosurgery department in Indiana. The so Xiaomi is expert in the mouse spinal cord injury models. We test whether the recovery local energy supply can facilitate regeneration, the long projection axon in the cortical spinal tract. So Han Qi, so he's now running his own lab in Shanghai Jiaotong University to perform fifth cervical dorsal hemisection to eliminate the descending cortical spinal tract projections. So eight weeks after injuries, Han Qi inject BDA dye, which is a biting later dextran amine into the sensory motor cortex to trace the descending cortical spinal tract axon regeneration in the spinal cord. So why, why type of mice display no cortical spinal tract axon regeneration through the lesion site? This is the lesion site. But knockout mice exhibit robust axon regeneration with many cortical spinal tract axon growing, passing through the lesion and extending to the caudal spinal cord. So to achieve a 3D view of the entire spinal cord segment, so Han Chi divided the spinal cord into four sections. The, each section was cut into 10 sagittal sections and each section was giving us zodiac colors. Then to view the entire spinal cord, all series, 40 series, such as sections will reconstruct for imaging axon regeneration. So you can see white type of mice show little axon regrowth beyond the lesion site. But however, synthetic knockout mice exhibit more robust axon regeneration, where the many axons can grow in, and the longest axon gradually tapping off 2,000 micrometer long from the lesion site. So while regeneration data are very promising, but we are more enthusiastic to test energy crisis model. The so first, to trace the model kind of long distance delivery or transport in vivo in the synthetic knockout mice, the Hanji inject AV non-mitogenp into the model cortex. So model cortex derived the model kind of, which labeled by GMP, we abundantly distribute around the regenerate cortical spinal tract axons in the spinal cord after injury. So this data, but still don't tell us whether this model can kind of deliver it, but still it function or not function. The Hunch did second studies by loading the membrane potential dye, CMTM rows, directly into the injury axons, the rostrum to the lesion site. Then I made the color the heat map. So for the, uh, in the 20s, the injured axon from the white type and not kind of mice to represent distribution of the mitochondrial memory potential. So in the color heat map, the each band represent one mitochondrial and color code reflect membrane potentials. The blue represent lost membrane potential or damaged mitochondrial and the yellow or red color reflect high member potential or healthy mitochondrial. So obviously you can see a synthetic not kind of mice can recruit more healthy mitochondrial into injured axons than white type of mice at the seven days after injury. So this is the data is consistent with and study in the Japanese group to report using transgenic ATP sensor mice showing spinal cord injury can show is a cost energy deficit in the rostral cardio energy injury site. 
So we next examine whether this regeneration axon can reestablish cortical motor co neuron connections by recording EMG from the forelimb muscle in response to single power stimulation in the motor cortex. If a more axon regeneration in the spinal cord, they can make a connection with motor neuron. So give the high EMG amplitude, which compared to white type mice after injury. But we need to validate this enhanced amplitude is contributed by this regeneration axons. With a second study, but recut axon again, then its signal is disappeared. So this suggests the high EMG Re responses in syntophilic knockout mice after spinal cord injury was depending on the cortical spinal tract axon regenerations. So finally, we also assessed the function recovery. So we assessed forelimb and finger dexterity recovery by performing for the pallet retrieval task. The mouse was divided into two groups, success group or fail group. The fail group means the dropping missing and knocking off the food pallets. This is food pallets. So both genotypes show similar high success rate before the injury, but completely lost the functions the two weeks post-injury. However, not kind of mice display partial recovery after eight weeks post-injury. So these studies demonstrate that if enhancing mitochondrial transport by deleting synthetic gene can reverse injury-induced energy crisis that stimulate axon regeneration of spinal cord injury. But however, genetic deletion is now physiologically relevant to brain injury. So we proposed a new study by resetting the axon energy battery based on our hypothesis, the mature neuron have an axon model conjugate signaling cascade that can respond to the injury-induced energy crisis. Then can phosphorylation synthophilin, they turn off the synthophilin switch, anchoring switch, then remobilize the mitochondria for replacement. So after five or six years search and studies uh, through the two rounds of postdoctoral fellow, finally we identify target to the PEC-5. So PEC-5 is a brain mitochondrial target P21 activated kinase. The PEC-5 message RNA is was reported in Christine host group in, in Cambridge they found it can detect in axon, but decline in the postnatal stages. So Ning Huang is a former postdoc. He just started his new career in the setup a new lab in Xi'an Jiaotun Universities. So he confirmed this ex expression patterns in our culture cortical neuron. So both PEC-5 total RNA protein our active form PEC-5 is was reached the highest level in the first week in culture, then decline and undetectable by three weeks. This pattern is opposite to the syntophilin expressions. So to determine local new PEC-5 synthesized and signaling following injuries, so Ning using microfluidic chamber systems and combine with pure proximal ligation assay to determine local protein synthesized for the injury. He found that PEC-5 signaling can be activated locally in axon compartment 12 hours after injury. But this activation is transitory as after 36 hours, it is returned to the pre-injury levels. So we further, further confirmed this using Western blood by collecting axon compartment lysate from the axon bundle before post-injury at a different time points. So PEC-5 and um, phosphor PEC-5 are elevated gradually and peak at 24 hours post-injury and then decline, suggesting the PEC-5 signaling is special temporary activated by the injury. We also confirmed this in vivo by using spinal cord injury model, the three days after injury, we see the PEC-5 or uh, phosphor PEC-5 is increased. So next, we examine whether PEC-5 signaling is required for axon energy recovery after injury. 
So we're using two strategy as mean, first we depleting PEC5 expression by using sRNA or compare control sRNA 24 hours after injury. So depleting PEC5 expression can abolish recovery ATP level at exon tips 24 hours post injury. The second, we're using a chemical compound to specifically blocking or inhibit the PEC5 activity, the called PF, that also can suppress the recovery ATP level 24 hours after injury We compel the DMSO control. So while this study is consistent, the injury can activate PEC5. The next question is, what is the mechanism behind this recovery energy following injuries? So we know PEC5 and we, our data show that target to the axiom of the condo, we're using two different in the microscope. And one is confocal, which is as a global model country in axon, and second of all, by using super resolution statin microscope for two individual model country. You can pack five target to the model countries. Okay. So because and the synthetic and pack five, they co-localize on the surface exo model country. And we ask whether synthetic is a pack five phosphorylation target. So we do the mass spectrometry analysis, we identify four residues, 13 selenium residues crossed together, which is evolutionarily conserved at syntophilic amino terminal, a phosphorylation target by PEC5. Then we're replacing these four residues with alanine, which is phosphorylation dead mutation, and abolish the PEC syntophilic phosphorylation by PEC5. In addition, we're replacing these four residues with aspartic acid, which are mimicking the phosphorylation, can abolish syntophilin binding to the microtubule. So as we know, syntophilin state interaction with the microtubule is important for the stop mitochondrial transport. So based on this data, we suggest that PEC5 mediated phosphorylation of syntophilin can turn off syntophilin anchoring switch to remobilize damaged mitochondria for replacement. So this is just hypothesis. We need to test this. So we make a two mutant of syntophilin and a PEC5 by changing single residues in the kinase domain. The first we call CA PEC5 is constitutive of the active kinase. The second, a KD PEC5, a kinase dead mutations. Then we introduce these two mutants into the DRG neuron isolated from aging mice, 12 months old mice. The control mice in the neuron show is a almost no mitochondrial, very low mitochondrial transport, but PEC5 activation can dramatically increase mitochondrial dynamic transport, should PEC paragraph, hemochilograph. So PKD mutation, however, is a kind of standard mutation have no effect. So Ning was right now to test in vivo by using AV9 virus to injection into mouse spinal cord, then PEC5 activation can also can enhance in vivo mitochondrial transport in cytic nerves through the axon bundles. So this data provide evidence that reprogramming PEC5 signaling can remobilize damaged mitochondria for replacement in mature or aging neuron or in vivo nerve systems. So next question is, does it reprogram PEC5 signaling can recover injury-induced energy crisis and facilitate axon regeneration. And we examine axon ATP level using ATP sensor and before and after the axon injury using and the reprogramming in the PEC5 using by expressed CA PEC5 can partially recover the energy when compelled to control neurons and KD mutation neuron have abolished this recovery. So this support is that reprogramming can rescue injury-induced energy crisis. So how about regeneration? So this is a regeneration timeline and uh, DRVA we did virus infection and the DRV12 we do exon injury and DRV18 for imaging exon regeneration. 
can see in the wild type control neuron, and after injuries, an axon is harder to reproduce. But in the CA PEC5 activation neuron, you see axon is robust increased regeneration, but not KD mutation neuron. This supports our conclusion that reprogramming PEC5 signaling facilitate axon regeneration by recovering injury induced energy crisis. So in these studies, we reveal an energy repair program by which injury induced PEC5 signaling with an axon compartment can turn off centrally angling switch. This is not like genetic deletion in the knockout mice. This actually is just by programming energy through the signal transduction pathway. Then replacing damaged mitochondria with a healthy way injury axon to support neuron survival and regeneration. So in the past decades, we have learned that since central nerve system regeneration is controlled by genetic program and signaling cascade or mechanism or extracellular inhibitory factors. So we expect that regeneration could be more robust by combining energy repair with these intervention mechanisms. So why we target the mitochondrial anchoring protein to enhance the axon mitochondrial transport, several other labs, they instant the targeted model adapter protein to boost mitochondrial transport in promoting axon regeneration in different nerve systems. I show you here the three papers. The first is from Shigan Ho's group and in the children, Boston Children's Hospital, Harvard University. They're using ventral ganglion cell as model systems. The second from Mark Hamerov group in Yale, they're using C. elegant GABA motor neuron. The third paper is from the Jeff Twist group, they're using DRG neurons. So all these three studies consistently support the concept that enhancing mitochondrial trafficking is an effective cellular target for promoting both central and peripheral nerve system regenerations. So in addition to study mitochondrial transport, so our lab also study the reprogramming the mitochondrial energy metabolism. So in the remaining about five, 10 minutes, I'm going to introduce these new research directions. And we know as neuron and glial cells align together the maintenance axon energy metabolism must include contribution by glial cells. The so oligodendrocyte and uh, are the myelinating cells surrounding the central nervous system axons, the limiting the access the metabolized from exercise environment to the axons. In addition, oligodendrocyte and neuron exhibit large in the diversities in the proteomic and metabolomic landscape. Oligodendrocyte provide metabolites a protein that may be in short supply in neuron. So we raise the fundamental questions is whether oligodendrocyte can modulate axon energy metabolism. So this study was motivated by totally unexpected findings. The carry is postdoc and the lab in the when a co-cultural primary oligodendrocyte, cell, which is labeled by MBP in the axon chambers with axon together. And she found axon ATP level display progressively increased when neuron when, with neuron maturation when compared to the axon ATP level when culture alone. So this axon energy enhancement is more robust in more mature neuron at two weeks. Then carry add is the condition medium harvest from the oligodendrocyte culture to the axon chamber for 24 hours. Then consistently, the condition medium can increase axon ATP levels. So Kramer Ambus group in Germany is, has established that oligodendrocyte exosome can increase neuronal survival that maintain axon transport and promote long-term axon health. But we invest, but mechanism is not very clear. So we investigate whether the exosome 
can mediate axon energy enhancement. So we purified axon from oligodendrous cell condition medium by gradient centrifugation and fractionation. And then labeled axon with axon membrane dye called exoglue. So this showed a green color. Then we incubate this purified axon with a cut granola. So after incubation for two hours, you can see exosome will readily internalized into the cell body and axon. This internalization can enhance the energy metabolism as, as by the seahorse measurement, including the basal respiration and ATP productions. But however, the seahorse assay has limitation by detecting energy metabolism as a whole a pool of the total mitochondria. To monitor individual, individual mitochondria ATP productions, we engineer HP sensor by targeting to the mitochondria matrix, to the axon mitochondria ATP level was increased after incubation with axon for 24 hours. Then we try to understand what is the molecule that can mediate this is enhancement. We first choose the so 2 as a candidate in regulating mitochondrial energy metabolism based on the five lines of the evidence in the literature. The first so 2 is enriched in the oligodendrous cell exosome and expressed 40 times high in exosome in, in the oligodendrous cell compared to neuron and localized in the mitochondrial to mediate the acetylation the mitochondrial protein. And so to not compromise, this break reduced the cellular ATP level. In addition, as many evidence indicate, cellular energy metabolism is regulated by the acetylation, the lysine residues in the mitochondrial proteins. So we confirm this relative CO2 expression in cortical culture with a mixed neuron. So neuron labeled by beta-3 tubulin and is an oligodendrous cell labeled by MBP. So you can, so too, is not detected in the neuron, but highly enriched in the oligodendrous site and the astrocyte. So this is consistent to the brain RNA, RNA database. So this is a mouse brain RNA sequence database. So so too is highly enriched in oligodendrous site but much, much low in almost undetectable in neuron. But in human so 2 database, the so 2 is highly enriched oligodendrous cell and including mature astrocyte, but many low, much low in the neurons. So based on this expression patterns, so we proposed a working model. The transcellular delivery, the so 2 from oligodendrous cell to the axon can enhance energy metabolism by deacetylation, the mitochondrial proteins. So we're using immunotransmission, electromicroxby. We examine the multiple multivesicular body because its exome is generated from a multivesicular body. In the oligodendrous cell cultures, you can see the antibody so to label on the surface the multivesicular body. And also in the mice in vivo study that we show is a uh, uh, multivascular body labeled by SO2 antibody is a connect link con close to the myelin sheath. So we also purify exosome from condition media harvest from either Y type or SO2 knockout oligodendrous cell. Then this then co label with the SO2 and the HSP antibody, which is protein frequently packaged with exosomes. So in the majority exosome, about 62% released from Y type oligodendrous cell contains SO2. But however, SO2 was not detected in exosome released from SO2 knockout oligodendrous cell. So, because SO2 is undetectable in neuron, we artificially overexpress SO2 in neuron, which can enhance the exon energy metabolism, but not in the control neurons. So we alternatively, co-culture cortical neuron axon with the primary oligodendrous cell isolated from Y-type or so to knockout mice. The so to 
is not detectable in the not colonized oligodendron cell, but not in cell lysate. But however, co-culturally, Y type so to oligodendron cell enhanced axon energy level, but so to knock out oligodendron cell fail to enhanced axon levels. So lysine acetylation and deacetylation is a key post translation modification for mitochondrial energy metabolism. The deacetylation is associated with enhanced mitochondrial ATP production capacities. So to determine which mitochondrial protein are acetylated, so we purified mitochondrial fraction from cortical neuron for mass spectrometry analysis. The proteomic data suggests at least nine mitochondrial protein in cortical neuron are strongly associated with the lysine acetylation and provide us candidates for deacetylation assays through the transcytal delivery of SU2. So, so Ning did is isolate, did a study using isolate mitochondrial from neuron, pre-treated with con control medium or SU2 so Y type oligodendrous condition medium or knockout condition medium for 24 hours, and then followed by immunoprecipitation with the anti-pen acetylation antibodies. The strong deacetylation of NT1, NT2 protein was observed in neuron pre-treated with conditioned medium from Y type, but not from so to knock out mice. So NT1, NT2 are the mitochondrial endoning nucleotide translocase that exchange ADP to ATP across the mitochondrial membrane for ATP generations. So three positive charge lysine in MT1 are critical for binding negative charge ADP or ATP. But neutralizing lysine by acetylation can reduce its binding affinities. But deacetylation by SO2 can recover this binding affinity to ADP or ATP that increased energy metabolism. So we found that the validate this transcellular signaling pathway in mouse spinal cord dorsal hole by injection of the oligodendrous cell purified exosome and exam mitochondrial membrane potential as a readout for the bioenergetic capacities. So after injections, exosome shows green color. We are readily found in the myelinated axon bundle and the cell body. And then we also compare the exon mitochondrial membrane potentials in the Y type and so to not cut the spinal cord. The signal intensity mitochondrial membrane potential die with an exon bundle was significantly reduced in so to not cut the mice spinal cord, suggesting reduced by energetic capacity. So these phenotypes could be rescued by injection the Y type oligodendrous exosome, but not not so to knock out oligodendral exosomes. So this study demonstrates that is so to is not undet is undetectable in neuron, but highly enriched in oligodendral site and released with exosome. The transcellular delivery of so to is critical for exon energy enhancement by deacetylation mitochondrial protein NT1 and T2. So we, we, we in vivo deliver this to, to exosome into spinal cord, exon can enhance local ATP productions. So exon energy deficit is a pathological hallmark in neurological and mental disorders. Declined energy metabolism is also detected in the aging neurons. So our studies provide new cellular target for boosting exon mitochondrial energy metabolism in aging linked or AD associate human iPSC derived neuron or organoids. This is a, our ongoing studies and performed by the postdoc and graduate students right now. So before ending my talk, I should give some credits to my former current lab member and colleagues for their contribution to our research program. This is a photo we took before the pandemic and uh, several former lab members that I just mentioned during my talk contributed to the study I discussed today. 
Then we have the new photo and uh, took it just after pandemic. So six new lab members joined the lab and uh, they will continue working the reprogramming, the energy metabolism and the mitochondrial trafficking. Uh, also fortunately build a productive collaboration with many lab and this collaboration it contributed to our research program. I should mention a particular pay tribute to the Xiaomi, the contribution who allow us to test our energy crisis hypothesis in a mouse spinal cord injury model. So it is very sad that Xiaomi passed away after a long fight with cancers. So now I have, uh, I'm happy to take the questions. Okay, thank you, Zhu Zhuhang. That's a really, really, really wonderful talk. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, so for the audience, please type your question into the um, uh, chat uh, box. I'm going to read it out uh, sequentially because we're on the webinar format. If everyone just raise their hand, it could be more disorganized. So the question, let me just read it out. Uh, the first question asked about Sakata Ghosh asking, is uh, uh, synaptic feeling involved in other cellular function? And also the similar question is, does this uh, synaptic uh, feeling knockout mice experience only symptoms related to the hype mitochondrial movement or only other related to phenotype? Uh, this is two uh, very fantastic questions. Uh, first, so synaptic I didn't mention, but synaptic feeling is a neuronal specific and exon target proteins. Um, they have several other labs they publish and short isopho maybe is associated with other uh, tissue of cell line, but this also involved in the tumor uh, pro progressions because a tumor progression requires high dynamic the mitochondrial delivery. So we don't study for that because this is a long isoform is looks is a neuronal specific. The second question is about phenotypes for enhanced mitochondrial transport. So we are, our lab is starting to working on this. We prepare the manuscript right now. So if the mitochondrial dynamic transport enhance the transport, but not affect mitochondrial energy production capacity, but only change its location, the mitochondria. If in more mature neuron, mitochondria mainly stationary, sitting on some high energy demanding area, support such as synaptic transmission. But if deleted synaptic make this mitochondria not stationary, this is mobile. So it's like a gas station. This mobile gas station now is the stationary gas station. So that's cost the energy balance is not evenly around these synapses they cause synaptic dysfunction. And this dysfunction, however, is not caused a neural death, but caused as a mental disorder. We have the working right now for the mental disorder, make is the synaptic transmission not stable, but not synaptic transmission, not dysfunction, just not stable, cause the high variability of synaptic transmissions. Yes. Okay. Yi okay. Hong asked, uh, the probably the mechanism about set of feelings function, how set of feeling anchors mitochondria and does this prevent a uh, motor loading or physical attachment to mitochondria or membrane or set of skeleton? This is another awesome question. Yes, it's a mechanism. And uh, we have published several papers so dealing about the mechanism. So centrifuging have the one amino terminal have the one microtubular strong binding domain. This binding can uh, stop mitochondrial transport. So synthetic the C-terminal, however, have the mitochondrial anchoring domain, which is transmembrane domain, target to the mitochondrial outer membranes. So these two domain, one is a binding to the mitochondrial, second binding to the um, microtubular, can stop mitochondrial movement. Our uh, data show the PEC5A phosphorylation can switch off this binding affinity. So this phosphorylation site is close to the microtuber binding site. So negative charge as phosphorylation can turn off the binding affinity, then make this 
anchoring can off on the on switch. Okay, this is based on a binding affinities. So regarding about e-home regarding question regarding motor protein, yes. So we found centrifugal binding can to the mitochondria can through the incorporation with the motor proteins. This binding centrifugal binding can compete motor protein engagement. So that can compete all the motor protein engagement for the organelle, then also in, impose static interaction with the microtubule. Then stop a mitochondrial movement. Okay, Yihong also asked actually, is centrifugal can anchor other organelle such as lysosome? Yes, and uh, this is another uh, lab they published. They use this centrifugal target to other organelle can stop as organelle transport, such as lysosome or is uh, endosomes. Um, this is using uh, epigenetic studies to recruitment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Philip Deville said, amazing talk, and asked, does mitochondria move differently on acetylated, uh, acetylated, acetylated microtubule track? Well, uh, this is very good questions. And uh, because motor protein, uh, mitochondrial transport depending on kinesian dining motor protein, the balance. That if we with third force for anchoring, that depending on how much protein level. If we use high centrifugal recruitment, the even mitochondrial engage with motor protein, there's motor protein no function. If we recruit more motor protein, compete anchoring protein, the so motor driving the force can compete off the centrifugal anchoring force. This is the balance. So based on the how much proteins engage for these organelles. Okay, uh, so Hans, since you already mentioned about dining and kinesing, I think Yi Hong's next question is related to this. He's asking how do cells sort healthy mitochondria from damaged ones so the healthy one can move toward axon, whereas the damaged one goes back to cell body. <laughs> So you can always ask beautiful <laughs> questions. So yes, this is, a, we don't know the mechanism and uh, we found this phenotype is very significant. So as a bi-directional transport, a biased transport, healthy versus damage, we call stress the mitochondrial transport is different motility and based on the directions. Um, we don't know the mechanism in this field. Actually, a lot of people want to eat, like, get us an answer. Why is the, stress mitochondrial prefer for the retrograde transport into the cell body. The cell body has more lysosome and mitophage and makes sense for more high efficiency, more uh, eliminated damage in mitochondrial. Um, how is the mitochondrial health or memory potential determining the motor protein recruitment for the dining versus kinesis? We don't know is the answer yet, okay? Okay, next question is from Tong Wang. He's asking this also actually, I'm interested to know, what kind of intracellular signal does the injury or lesion on, my, uh, on axon triggers? Uh, and we, how could it subsequently activate PEC-1? Uh, first question is, is signaling for mitochondrial damage. So you, if you damage an axon and describe the membrane and the calcium flux, this calcium, I think, is a primary insult damage mitochondria. Okay, this first. The second, the secondary damage maybe is a, as a is a cascade pathway and uh, caused the cell death pathway caused mitochondrial damage. This uh, is a literature already published a lot, but I think a primary just uh, is a mechanism. A, a second, a minutes after injury, I think it's calcium contributions. Okay. Um, second question is uh, how the PEC1 uh, is activated. Okay. So uh, we don't know PEC1, how PEC1 PEC is activated. Um, this is energy uh, one way, and we found in our published data, we found an AKT. Okay. Uh, AKT is the one of uh, ATK, sorry, ATK is the one pathway, upstream pathway. That, which is sensitive to the low energy level, and then can activate ATK 
AGK can phosphorate PEC5, make a PEC5 phosphorylation. This phosphorylation make a kinase be active. So this is the one of the kinase pathway through the energy deficit signaling. Okay. It's related to this question. I'm curious, you said calcium is a major source in the damaging mitochondria. Is this calcium from extracellular space? Extracellular space, yes. Okay. Okay, now we'll go to the next. I think you have comments, great talk, wonderful talk. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Dong Xuehu actually asked, I believe you already talked about, uh, ask, uh, answer this question a little bit. What's the difference uh, between, di uh, between dining and a mirror on mitochondrial transport? Dining and the mirror? Uh, mirror, yeah, mirror one. Uh Okay, this middle one is the, we also work in the middle and the other several lab, including uh, Joseph Kindler and Tom Schwartz and many other labs. They work in different model systems. So middle is adapter uh, connecting link to the kinesing recruit to the mitochondrial. This is the original research in the, many years ago. But recently, and also we found is the in Drosophila model, in neuron model, it's a middle one mutations also can uh, impact retrograde transport of mitochondria in axons. They contribute by the recruit to the dining model proteins. So, and the dining and the kinesin, maybe the shear is adapters, okay? By the triple, and uh, is a trip protein or is the mitochondrial proteins but share the core adapter receptor, or maybe they have the regulation through, through that maybe as the base on the signal cell sickness pathway to one way can recruit more kinesin or other way can recruit more dining, make the balance and the transport. So, and uh, what is the, how selectively for dining and kinesin is not very clear, okay. Okay, don't you also ask that, how can calcium stop mitochondrial transport and neuron? How does calcium, uh, whether calcium has only in effect on uh, synthophilin? Um, so calcium and the combining to the middle, this middle is calcium sensor, that can change the middle, the binding to uh, motor protein engagement with the uh, organelle. This calcium dependent is the arresting the mitochondrial transport during the calcium signaling or during synapse transmission is if we activate synapses, so calcium influx. This is one of the uh, current model how synapse activity can stop mitochondrial movement. Okay, for the, for the second or what's the next questions? Uh, questions. I think the calcium has something to do with uh, centrophilin. Centrophilin, um, so we don't find calcium can directly inter interact with centrophilin, but this uh, calcium signaling probably can, if it thinks calcium remove is the motor protein engagement with organelle helps centrophilin engagement with the uh, anchoring switch for bindings. That's so maybe it's indirect as this mechanism involved, not calcium direct binding to the uh, centrophilin. But in our, uh, another study published two, three years ago in the Nature Met Metabolism, we studied the hot centrophilin and uh, can recruit mitochondria in the synapses through the mycin and the actin filament. This is totally different, but it's not, that is not only in the calcium responses. Okay, Chi Ming asked, could chemical drugs such as oxidant, oxidant can induce PEC1 activity besides the injury? So can you repeat again the question? Can uh, oxidant, you know, this uh, can induce, uh, can trigger PEC1 activation? Uh, excellent. Uh, oxidant. O oxidant, oh, yeah, we don't know yet. So okay. we did is the, uh, we, we don't have a study for this part. Okay. Actually, uh, Li Wei asked, as to comments on a recent print print. So, <laughs> okay, we have, uh, uh, the title is most excellent mitochondria in cortical 
pyramid neurons lack mitochondrial DNA and consumes ATP by Frank uh, Pollux. <laughs> so <Beautiful>. what? <laughs> I haven't I haven't read this. It's a way. Maybe you can send me these papers. <laughs> okay. Yi Hong is relaying question from someone in China ask the possibility of a treatment exploring for hereditary mitochondria uh, myopathy based on your finding. Whether can use a finding to treat some mitochondrial disease. <laughs> mitochondrial disease. Yes, uh, hereditary. Uh, hereditary uh, yeah. So, uh, wait, yeah, but this is not, we just can't right now, just uh, not for mitochondrial dysfunction. Mm -hmm. We just uh, this study just for mitochondrial as positioning, okay. Yeah. So based on is a reprogramming centrifugal expression and uh, for how mitochondrial can position to support energy recovery in the in the uh, in the neuron when you get injury. So this is another issue we want. I want to just uh, I didn't mention in my talk. So if let's say uh, now we talk the regeneration after acute injury. So we suppose local mitochondrial damage, but in the cell body and in majority area, mitochondria still is healthy. Then you can transport, can help the replacement. But if in the chronic mitochondrial degeneration, the mitochondria is globally damaged, I don't know this transport can do much help, benefits for this, for replacement. So this is just for the, for the extra injury, this only locally damaged mitochondria. Okay, so there's so no more question on the chat, but actually, before I let you go to her, I have a question for you, okay? This is probably more philosophically. You were the, in the last part uh, of your talk, you showed the third tool is essential, and it's very, very important to boosting energy metabolism. Mm -hmm. Then what the hell evolution do not want neuron itself, themselves, to evolve this mechanism to expressing third tool instead of getting third tool from oligodendrite? Um, would it which, be beneficial just the neurons themselves expressing high level so too? So, so too is a big family, at least of five, six isoform. Okay. Uh, in neurons, is interesting. That's so, of course, our interest because so too is a very low level or even not detectable in the neuron, mm -hmm. but highly enriched in the oligodendrocyte cell. Because in vivo systems, oligodendrocyte cell is a uh, wrap all the axons. Okay. That's cause and of all, how about extra intracellular signaling or delivery for, for this so signaling pathway. But just for the cell culture dish, we just overexpress so too, can enhance the mitochondrial transport, a mitochondrial energy metabolism yeah. it's, it's sufficient if enhanced. So that is that uh, we right now have the graduate student and working, try to understand what is other target in the mitochondria, which by so too can de acetylation can enhance the mitochondrial energy metabolism. This is one way. Or second, why not so one, not so three, so four, so five, don't have these selective functions, only so two. So, so three maybe is very high rich in the neuron, but not target to the mitochondria, okay? So we don't know is that right now it's a balance because on the, on a sequence database. So we just search what is a model, neuronal model kind of protein, which is a target by so too. And can, in, we know working on a human, in a human, we're using a, a human iPSC neuron. So expression level is much low. Then we enhance, it's an unpublished data. We enhance the so too by overexpressed so too, the enhanced energy model kind of energy levels. So this is our target in the, we, in the disease neuron. If we, and the mitochondria not totally damaged, but still function, and then we can boost energy capacity, just to increase so to expression level, okay. Okay, thank you. I think we are, all the question has been asked. Uh, before we ending, thank you again, Zuhang, for the beautiful talk. And I also want to thank you everyone for joining us. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna, gonna end the song. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Johans. Thank you, everyone. See you in the month. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Bye.